Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the issuance of common stock. What is the big idea? Well, issuance of common stock, it means when the company sells the stock to the public. So they, so they sell a stock and what do they get in return? Well, they usually get money. Now we're going to see today that you may get something other than money, but usually this is how you raise money by selling common stock. So the company is selling stock to the public. What issues do we have to deal with? from an accounting perspective. First, we have something called par or state value stock that we have to deal with this. To deal with this. We have no par value stock. We have stock issued in non-cash transaction. It means you receive something other than cash when you issue the common stock. And there's cost associated with issuing common stock. We have to deal with this. And sometimes the stock is issued in combination with other securities. And here we have to learn about the proportional method and the incremental method, which we'll talk about in the next session. So specifically, I will not be covering this issuance of stock in the next session. Starting with is what is the par value stock? Well, let me tell you what that is. The par value is an amount arbitrarily arbitrarily assigned to the stock. It's like basically your name. Someone gave you your name. It's an arbitrary name. Well, it's, it means something, but it's arbitrary. You could be, you could be named Adam, Tony, George, any name that your parents decided to. So the amount could be a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, any amount. For example, Apple stock par value is 0 0.00015. IBM, 0 0.20, 20 pennies. Google, 0 0.001. Now you might be asking, why do we have to use par value stock? Well, this concept is from the late 19th, early 20th century. It used to be, so notice the word used to be associated with the value of the stock. So basically it was kind of a contingent amount or a guaranteed amount. That's no longer the case. Because each state is different, what happened is companies choose low amounts, as you just saw, like Apple, IBM and Google to avoid any potential contingent contingent liability. And what happened most states these days, they follow something called the Model Act or the Model Business Corporation Act. I believe it's by the a uh, Association of American Bar Association, ABA, and it eliminate the, the par value concept. So simply put, you're going to be giving the par value, but all you need to know is it's an arbitrary amount assigned to the stock, and we'll see how to deal with it from an accounting perspective. Let's start with an example. Let's assume my company issued, sold 500 shares, $1 par, par value stock for 15000 Simply put, what does that mean? That means Farhat Lectures needed 15000 for business purposes. What do I do? I went to investors. I told them, look, I'll give you 500 of my shares, 500 shares. I'll give you 500 shares and you will give me in return $15,000. And now you are part of my company you own 500 out of whatever number of shares I have. How do we how do we journalize this entry? Well, first, I received $15,000 in cash. I debit cash 15,000. How much do I credit common stock? If you want to tattoo this on your hand, Common stock is credited, tattoo this on your hand. Number of shares, so this number is number of shares times the par value. The par value is this arbitrary amount assigned to the stock, a dollar. I issued 500 shares. Now, anything left goes into paid in capital in excess of par, and that's 14,500. What you need to understand is this. Companies separate the amount that they receive into the common stock and the paid in capital. How much the common stock? First, you determine the common stock. The common stock is the number of shares times the par value of the stock. Anything left goes to paid in capital in excess of par. Let's assume Farhat Lectures issued 500 shares of $1, now stated value. So notice it's not par value, it's called stated value. If you hear the word stated or par, from an accounting perspective, they mean the same thing. It means they get treated the same thing. What does that, what does that mean? means I received, the company received $15,000 in cash. I credit common stock for also 500, which is the number of shares times the stated value. Then anything left is paid in capital in excess of stated value. Notice rather than saying par, I say stated, but everything else is the same. And the good news is later on, we'll learn about preferred stock. Preferred stock is issued the same way. What does that mean? If I am talking about issuing preferred stock, which we'll talk about preferred stock later, if you know how to issue preferred stock, if you know how to issue common stock, 
all what's going to happen is we're going to be using rather than common, we'll be using preferred stock. But the accounting is the same. Whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. My motto is saving CPA exam candidate and accounting student one at a time. I provide you additional resources. I don't replace your CPA review course nor your accounting course. My resources are aligned with your material. So for example, I have specifically an intermediate accounting textbook. Also, they are aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Wiley, Roger, and Gleam. I give you access to all the previously AI CPA questions, 1,500 CPA questions with detailed reviews. Don't shortchange yourself. Invest in yourself. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording and share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Now, let's take a look at a journal entry where we are dealing with no par stock. No par means... Guess what? You remember that part is an arbitrary amount assigned to the stock? I don't want to assign any arbitrary amount. Why? Maybe I can av avoid any contingent liability in that state. Just because it's an old rule, just let's go without any part value. So some states, what they do is they levy a heavy tax on these issues. Just, you know, just want to make money, basically. And it's considered, could be considered legal capital, which is reduced the dividend paying ability. So that's why some companies, they avoid issuing no par because it it can, could be considered legal uh, it could be considered the full amount could be considered the legal liability for the company so what they do they issue it with par but they issue it in a very very small amount so so let's assume farhat lectures issues 500 and when we say issued it means sold 500 shares for 15000 that's easy peasy debit cash credit common stock notice here when we have no par when we have no par when par is not involved you debit cash credit common stock now let's discuss issuing stocks for non-cash transaction what does that mean it means the company gave out stocks and what they got in return is something other than cash some asset not cash if it's cash it's easy so how do we record these transactions when the company issues stocks and gets something else in return well first if we know the fair value of the stock issued then that's easy we'll go with that so if i know the fair value of the stock we'll base the will base the transaction based on that. Or if I don't, I'm gonna look at the fair value of the non-cash consideration. What am I receiving? Do I know the fair value of that amount? If that's the case, I will go with that. So Farhat Lectures issued 1,000 shares of its par value common stock to purchase an office space in downtown Philadelphia. The fair value of Farhat Lecture is $300. So I know the fair value of my stock. Well, if I give someone 1,000 shares, and we all know the fair value is 300 it means this office building is worth 300,000 because i assume the person that i'm dealing with is rational and they accepted the value of my stock i credit common stock number of shares 1000 shares times the par value 1000 times 1 equal to 1000 anything left is paid in capital in excess of par common stock easy let's assume I, the same transaction except the fair value of my company is unknown because it's a private company. Well, we look at the fair value of the office building. The fair value of the office building is 275,000. It means if they accepted 1,000 shares of my stock and the fair value is 275, it's an equal transaction because we are both rational. The exchange has to be equal. So the transaction would look something like this. The office building is now recorded at 275. Common stock is 1,000 shares times a dollar. 1000 and paid in capital what's left is 274 that's basically how it works and always paid in capital I, f I forgot to mention this it's basically the last transaction you do it's basically the plug for example they could tell you that the fair value they, they may not tell you the fair value but the fair value could be discounted cash flow so if they tell you the discounted cash flow is a certain amount you will use that or sometimes they tell you based on a professional appraisal well, if a professional appraisers are involved, then the professional appraisals will give you the fair value, assuming you don't know the fair value of the stock that you are issuing. Let's talk about cost of issuing stocks, because when a company issues stocks, you will have you will incur a cost. It's not free. That will be easy. Companies will issue stocks and it's basically a free transaction. So what are the first of all, what are cost of issuing stocks like? What is considered that? 
any cost incurred directly to sell the stocks like what like before you can sell the stock sometimes you have to get an audit or to prepare financial statements specifically for selling the stock to give it to the new investors accounting fees you have to file some paperwork legal fees you have to ask a company to sell your stocks underwriting cost printing cost that's not really anymore you used to print the stock certificate now you might have to print some brochures to give it to the clients that's not really the case you send them a pdf file now you might have to pay certain taxes in the state in which you are operating as long as those are all related direct cost related to selling the stock itself how do we deal with those costs well guess what those costs are not expensed how do we deal with them they are a reduction in the amount of paid in capital so we're going to reduce the amount paid in capital now make sure to differentiate between cost of issuing stocks and cost of issuing debt cost of issuing debt on the on the other hand is amortized is expense over the life of the bond the cost of issuing stocks is considered a permanent part of the stock issuance and the best way to look at, to, is to look at an example so let's assume farhat lectures issued i issued 10000 shares of my $1 par value stock four hundred thousand dollars so i received one hundred thousand and i incurred fl incurred five thousand dollar in those issuance cost so let me show you the transaction i'm going to debit cash one hundred thousand credit common stock ten thousand number of shares times the par value should be ten thousand let's copy it from the other slide paid in capital nexus of par is ninety thousand excellent then i'm gonna debit paid in capital in excess of par five thousand credit cash five thousand so what i did is that additional five thousand dollar Rather than debiting an expense, I debited, I reduced my capital. Now, obviously, you're going to say, why doesn't he uh, combine those two transactions? And sure, I can combine them. So simply put, when I combine those two, it comes out to I receive cash of 95. Common stock is 10,000 times one. And paid in capital in excess of par is 85,000. Again, this paid in capital is a plug. Okay, but basically here I had to reduce it by 5,000 by the amount of cash. Now, what's the best way to do now? The best way is to go to farhatlectures.com and work MCQs on farhatlectures.com to learn more about this topic. At the end of this recording, if you are an accounting student, I strongly suggest you take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. My motto is saving CPA candidate one at a time invest in yourself invest in your career don't shortchange yourself the cpa exam is a lifetime investment and you have to use it once i don't replace your cpa review course good luck and study hard